So once we've got our cleaned mocap clips, or indeed you could use mocap clips that are available on the internet, which have usually been cleaned up already, uh, we're in a position to make a sequence of animation out of those clips, and we're going to use the story window to do that. So I'm going to start from scratch now. I'm going to bring back on the original character that we started the tutorial with. I'm just going to quickly characterize her. And rename. Let's do the renaming first. Delete that little one we don't need. Uh, and then we're going to uh, expand that up. Drag the character onto hips. Characterize biped. Uh, and then I'm going to rename the character as well. There we are, all ready to go. So now I've got a character in the scene. We can go into the story window. And I'm actually going to use some clips from the previous moves folder that ships with uh, Motion Builder. Uh, there's some really good stuff in there. Just click on that one, uh, and I'm going to choose some running animation here. So I'm going to start off with a run and jump obstacle, and I just drag it onto the bottom window here. It's important to use the bottom window for uh, mixing your motion data. The top window is for other things. Uh, run right 90 degree turn. Uh, then run straight for a bit and then run downstairs and see each one of those I'm just dragging onto the story window uh, and these are all just FBX files all you need is an FBX file with an animated skeleton uh, and the story window will work quite happily so let's uh, shuffle these along a bit well let's have a little look at the way the story window works so these clips are, you can drag them and reposition them in time in different places um, if you want to position them accurately, you can snap it. It automatically snaps onto your current time marker, which is quite handy. Uh, and if you want to repeat, let me just move this one up a little bit. If you want to repeat one of these, you can just drag out and it repeats multiple copies of your clip. Likewise, if you need to clip extra bits off, uh, you can do that. And if you press this one, this one toggles between uh, looping clips and scaling clips. If you toggle it onto scaling clips, uh, you can stretch them so they actually take a bit longer. I don't particularly want to do that. Uh, and most of the time you don't. So, let's have a look at these clips then. I'll move them a bit closer to each other. Just set my timeline to 234 there, which is the furthest extent of these clips. You can see the markers there on each clip tell you the start and end uh, in and out times for the clip and also the 0 to 45 frames of the clip. So let's just uh, run through that. So the first one we have is run and jump over an obstacle. Next one we have is run and do a 90 degree turn. And then we have run straight. And then we have run downstairs. And we're going to blend these together. You'll notice they're all in completely different positions in the uh, 3D space that we're working in, but that's not a problem. That's the kind of thing we can overcome quite easily. So let's just expand this up a little bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to actually blend between these. So if I just come to the end of this clip and uh, make sure that we can see what we're doing. We're going to blend one of those last strides into one of the first strides of this particular one here. So what we need to do is we need to choose uh, a moment where both of them look pretty much the same and we can use that moment to blend. Now, in a lot of moves that you'll be doing, you actually uh, trying to match up the position of a foot so that when you do the blend the one foot is locked to the floor and the blend looks quite natural 
because we're doing a run, I'm actually going to blend based on the pelvis, and I'm going to do it when the character is in mid-flight. So it'll take off from one foot on this clip, and by the time they land on the other foot, they'll be on this clip. So let's come towards the end of this clip here, and we can see that the last step she takes is she takes off from her right foot and lands on her left foot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to the end there. That's quite a good ending point actually because uh, she's on her left foot and we've got a passing point where the, f the other leg is just about to pass. So she lands on her left foot. So looking at this run then, her first stride is actually to land on her right foot. So we don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get it to about the passing point here. Let's just zoom in a little bit so we can see that better get it to the point where she's on her right foot to the passing point there and I'm just going to trim the clip back to that point. During that time from the time where she's on her right foot and her left foot is passing sorry on this side if they were a bit nearer that would be easier but that's uh, from the time here where she's on her right foot with her left foot passing to here where she's on her left foot with her right foot passing, that is going to be the duration of the blend. So what I need to do is I need to drag these together so that they overlap by about that distance. Now, it looks a bit odd at the moment because she runs along in this position on the screen and then as you go through the blend she drags back to this other run here. So it's quite difficult to judge if we've got the timing right at this particular moment. So we're going to do an initial match uh, on this to try and get this to work. So I'm going to move the um, timeline to pretty much the middle of the clip, which in theory is where she's in mid-air on both strides. Uh, and I'm going to select the hip. Uh, with the hip selected, I'm going to choose match. Now what match will do is it will take the two hip bones and it will try and line them up at a particular moment during that transition uh, to the best of its ability to make your um, animation look as smooth as possible. So let's look at the various options. I have the second clip selected so I'm going to match it to the previous clip which makes sense. Uh, match it at the current time which is why I've put the time marker right in the middle there during that particular moment. Notice you can also do it at the start of the selected clip, in other words the beginning of the transition or the end of the previous clip, which is the end of the transition. Um, or you can do it between the two, which is effectively where I am at the moment. Then how do you do the matching? Well, you can either match the X, Y and Z coordinates, or you can match the X and Z coordinates and try and make the level uh, stay on the ground, which is what the default one is there. I want to match the X and Y and Z coordinates here because she's in mid-air and I don't want it to try and suck her down onto the ground. Um, and the other thing is that you can do the rotation as well. Now rotation can cause a few problems when you're doing matching um, because particularly if you're matching a foot or something like that because if the foot is on the heel on one clip and on the toe on the other clip it will match the entire animation around so the angle of the feet is the same and your character was running along nicely on the floor now starts to uh, run down through the floor at a 45 degree angle or something like that. So you have to be a bit careful with rotation. I'm going to actually put it on X, Y and Z to match up the rotation and then I'm going to try and fix that uh, later on if the rotation is, is too far out. So we just OK that. And now what we should be able to see is a transition. As she goes through the transition, she keeps running, which has worked quite nicely, in fact. I'm just going to do Control a to toggle through the uh, viewport modes, so that she's models only. Uh, and then take off from one foot, land on the other foot, and already starting to slow down. Just play that through in real time. Yeah, pretty seamless. Now. A good little tip here, if I go back into x-ray mode, um, I've got her hips selected. What I can do is I can turn on the trajectories uh, and that enables me to look at her hip positions. Oh. 
Now you can see from looking at that from above, actually the line that she was running along already, this yellow line around the outside, uh, follows pretty accurately and then she does a turn. So I'm quite happy with that result. So the next thing here is now she's run over to there. We're going to uh, do a bit more running straight. So she's run around the corner there. And she's going to go to here and she's going to run straight. Okay. Now, depending on how far you want her to run straight, you could shorten or lengthen this. So maybe just an extra step or something. Um, but it's exactly the same procedure. Just use focus F to whiz round. So the next clip here, she's starting on her left leg and landing on her right leg. So this clip here, position where I can see them both. This clip here, she's taking off from her right and landing on her left. This one she's taking off from her left and landing on her right. So I actually need to go on to the next step to do the transition properly. So I'll go to about there. And I'm just going to shorten that clip to that point. So now she's at the passing point. She takes off from her right leg and lands on her left leg. And on this one here, uh, from the passing point, she takes off from her right leg, lands on her left leg. So it's the same step for both. So let's do the uh, overlapping again. But this time, rather than um, using the match tool to match her, I'm going to use ghosting to match her. So if I turn on the ghosting here using this little um, show hide ghost button, we can see that the scene gets quite complicated. And we've got a whole variety of clips. If I run through the timeline. We can see she runs along here, that's one ghost, and then she leaves that ghost behind, and she runs around the corner, that's another ghost, and then she leaves that ghost behind over here, and then she moves on to this one here, which is the green ghost. So what I want to do is I want to move the green ghost to line up with the yellow ghost over here. So I click the green one, I choose the move tool, and I move the green ghost over to here, and I rotate it, and I move it again, so they kind of line up, oh yeah, they need to not line up with the yellow line. The yellow line is just, is just joining the start and finish points, of course the character actually runs out round here to get to the finish, so uh, although our um, uh, start position is, is okay-ish there. We just need to rotate that round so that she's running off in the same kind of direction. Okay, so there you can see that now she runs along and catches up with the other ghost and so on. And while we're here, we're just going to bring the running downstairs one uh, over to the same position as well uh, to make the next one a bit easier to view in the viewport. rotate that one to there so it's close enough we're still going to use the um, the match tool uh, for the stairs and so on in a minute so now we've got our uh, transition here we can see I'm still quite a way out so let's move that uh, back here Get this from the top view across to match the ghost. So that's okay and then we're just going to zoom in a little bit here. Just going to zoom in here to see what the actual transition is like. Well the timing's pretty good but the position's still all wrong. She goes up a bit higher as well now. Uh, that's because the matching on the previous one made her go down into the ground. So the rotation didn't work quite as smoothly as I wanted. 
so I can actually rotate that one I'll do it in the local axis uh, and oh, global might actually line up better in this particular case and uh, just rotate that up a little bit like that so that the two still meet and she still runs along the ground So that works quite well. And you can see that for something that's quite a simple blend, like this run, that actually lining it up by eye and using the ghosts works quite well. So for the final one here, we have to blend into her running downstairs. Uh, so the same procedure is going to be which, which foot does she take off and land from. So her last one here is where she takes off from her right foot and lands on her left. And then we get to the passing point. I'm just going to clip that down so that's the passing point and then on this one here she's actually starting on her right foot and landing on her left so what, what I'm going to do is here where she lands on her right foot and comes onto her left there. When her right foot hits the ground, I'm going to treat that as if it's the right foot landing at the beginning of this animation here. So what I need to do is get it to the point where the right foot is just hitting the ground there. I'm going to shorten this a little bit so, so there and I'm just going to drag this along to line up and to snap onto that point uh, so that the because at the beginning of the run downstairs the right foot is already planted so I've got the right foot planted here as well so let's choose the right foot just turn off trajectory for a moment uh, and I'm going to choose the clip here and then use the match tool so I'm going to match the right foot to the previous clip at the current time. Well, the current time is the start of the selected clip, but I'm going to choose start of selected clip anyway. I'm going to match the position in X, Y, and Z, because what I want to do is I'm going to make sure that the Z height is the same. I'm going to turn off rotation completely and do that by eye. So, OK, that one. Uh, let's just turn off... Uh, everything apart from the models and see what it looks like foot lands she starts going downstairs in terms of connecting the feet and making the transition happen at the right time and in the right place that's worked really well however if I just uh, get in a bit closer to the character here uh, and we play that through Hopefully you'll see that it's a little bit unnatural looking because she suddenly snaps into down the stairs. There's no there's no kind of natural transition between the two. Uh, let me just fix the timeline so we're on 155 now, so I can shorten the whole thing. Uh, and I'm actually just going to go to this point here, which is uh, 134. close enough. I go to the start of the transition here. Just so I can loop that little section through and we can watch it a few times. So although the timing of the feet is good, you can see there's still a sudden transition visually uh, to from one move to the next and that's what we're going to fix in the next tutorial <laughs>